Hello again, I'm Andy Duncan, and today I'm wearing the official Clarion West 2015 t-shirt, which says, I like stories in which all the men are dead. <laughs> the cohort agreed that was the critique quote of the summer. I've already talked about ways to comment on other people's work. But now it's time to think about the flip side of the process. Now that you, the author, has all these critiques from your peers, what to do with them? Probably the first thing you notice is that implementing the advice, all the advice you get, is literally impossible because people do not agree. One person says, you don't need this character, just eliminate them. Another says, that's my favorite character. Give us more of that character. And so on. This can happen with every element of the story. So what do you do? Well, assuming you're getting advice from multiple people on the same draft of the story, you can look for consensus. Nine people may say the same thing, leaving only the tenth as an outlier. So that may help, but you could as easily have a five to five split. And you may agree more with the outlier. The chief thing to remember is that this is your story and you are the decider. Listen carefully to all the advice. You need to hear all of it and think about all of it. Much of it will be of obvious help, as in, well, duh, why didn't I notice that before? But some of it will not resonate with you. Some people may not be reading the story you want to write. Perhaps they're trying to turn it into one of their own stories rather than yours. Heed the advice that seems to take you closer to the draft that you envision, even if it is not what you envisioned before the discussion. Because if you're lucky, the discussion may have given you an epiphany. A new light has dawned. Often this involves thematic elements. You may realize, oh, so that's why I wrote this story. Being able to revise for theme is a huge help. Now, what if your story or some part of your story just confused everyone? Well, now you have to decide which parts you want to be ambiguous, open to interpretation. You also have to decide what readings you want to rule out. If only one word is throwing people off, making them think your narrator might be an AI, for example, and you definitely do not want that, you might take out that word. Ask yourself, however, whether reading your narrator as an AI actually would be a big deal. Maybe that would make the story only more interesting. But never forget that an author has very limited say over how the individual reader is going to read any particular story. It is a collaboration, so be open to that. The late Carol Imschwiller, one of my heroes, loved to make a list during critique of all the recommended clarifications to other people's manuscripts. And then when it was her turn to go down the list, I don't want that clarified, and I don't want this clarified, on and on and on. Because if you make everything completely clear, Carol would say, there is no room left for the reader. In last week's critique group, my colleague Nikki Drayden put it another way. Uh, in a short story, Nikki said, the author and the reader have to meet halfway. That's a great way of looking at it. Now, at this point in my undergrad classes, one of my best students would raise their hand and say, but, but, but you said earlier 
this is your story and you are the decider. But now you're saying your story is a collaboration with the reader. And I would say exactly. They're both true. Remember the words of Walt Whitman. Do I contradict myself? Very well then, I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. Hope this helps. See you soon.